Hello there. My name is Dr. Omide and I'm going to um, discuss the histology of the urinary system. So um, we'll discuss the kidneys, the collecting system, then um, the ureters, urinary blood and the urethra. So the kidney is a compound tubular gland. Okay, compound tubular gland and it has the following functions um, it helps with filtration of blood is the element of secretion of uh, ions and reabsorption of some ions it also helps in the production of erythropoietin which helps in red blood cell formation it has a role in fluid and electrolyte balance acid base balance and in the metabolism of vitamin d so this is your kidney, you have two, one on the right, one on the left side, and um, this is the urinary bladder, that's the ureter. So the structure of the kidney, it has an outer cortex and an inner medulla. So this is the cortex and this is the medulla. And the inner portion of the medulla is the one that contains the collecting um, ducts that are grouped into pyramids. So this is your cortex here, and this is the medulla, and you can see it's, um, it has the, the medullary pyramids, and the medullary rays usually extend out to the cortex. You can see the blinking part, those are the medullary rays, they extend into the cortex of the kidney. So, and then we also have the, um, from the cortex, the extensions into the medulla are the renal columns. So this is the cortex extending as renal columns. And these are medullary pyramids extending as medullary rays into the cortex. For the medulla, uh, the pyramids within the medulla usually converge to form a papilla. Okay, so you have your pyramid here and they converge to form a papilla with a rounded apex. So this is a pyramid and that's the papilla. These usually project into a minor calyx. So you have a minor calyx and many minor calyces join to form major calyces. Many major calyces form a renal pelvis before you get to the ureter. So the uh, pyramids, the apices of the pyramids are the papilla the papilla empty into minor calyces. Minor calyces converge to form major calyx. Many major calyces form the renal pelvis that empties urine into the ureter. So the pyramids of the kidney within the medulla, okay, um, they have cortical substances around them. So this is the pyramid and it has some cortex substance around it. And that's what we call a, a lobe. So our renal lobe is made up of medullary pyramid and the cortical substance associated with it. Then you can appreciate medullary rays. These are the straight portions of the um, proximal and distal convoluted tubules and the collecting ducts and the cortical tissue associated with, with it. What's the blood supply to the kidney? The kidney is supplied by the renal artery. Renal arteries usually come from the abdominal aorta and they enter the kidney at the hilum of the kidney. When they get to the hilum, the renal arteries branch to form interlobar arteries. This run in between the pyramids. So renal branches to interlobar, which are located between the pyramids. Then this interlobar, what happens? When they get to the cortical medullary junction, they bifurcate to form the accurate arteries. They bifurcate to form accurate arteries, which run between the cortex and the bases of the, um, of the pyramid. So the interlobar arteries bifurcate form acrid at the cortical medullary junction. Then the acrid arteries will give rise to interlobular arteries that run radially in the cortex between the medullary rays. So from renal artery at the hilum, they branch to form interlobar arteries that run between pyramids, which these interlobar arteries at the cortical medullary junction, they branch to form acrid arteries. These run between cortex and the base of the pyramids. The acrid give rise to interlobular arteries that run radially in the cortex between the medullary rays and this interlobular form the afferents that um, 
um, empty into the glomerular capillaries and from the cap glomerular capillaries blood enters the uh, efferent arterial after filtration. So from the interlobular arteries you get your afferent arterioles and you say the afferent arterioles will give rise to glomerular capillaries that require these to form the efferent arterioles. Remember the efferent arterioles are smaller in diameter compared to the afferent arterioles. So the efferent arterioles are smaller in diameter than the afferents and this the importance of this is to be able to maintain filtration pressure. So the afferent arterioles from the cortical glomeruli usually form a capillary network around the tubules of the cortex that drain into arcuate veins. So now we are draining back. We dealt with arterial supply. Now afferent arterioles uh, from uh, glomerular, cortical glomeruli, they form capillary networks and this will be drained by arcuate uh, veins. So the efferent arterioles from juxta medullary glomeruli will send vasa recti, which are the stress at, uh, straight arteries into the medulla, and these usually join and ascend as venous vessel recta to drain the arteries veins. So the pattern of descending and ascending vessels usually now form the countercurrent exchange system. You have the afferents that um, form capillary networks and drain into arteries veins, and then you have the arterioles at the juxtamedullary glomeruli from the juxtamedullary glomeruli will send the vasa recta artery. And these atria, which are straight arteries, they in turn ascend as venous vessel recta, straight venous vessel. And this uh, join the arteries vein. So you can appreciate here, you have your renal uh, pyramid. Then um, from this portion, this is your renal lobule. Remember we said it's a pyramid and the cortical tissue around it. This is the capsule. And this is your, um, from this side, you have renal artery that will give interloba artery. Interloba at the cortical medullary junction forms the arcuate. Then from arcuate, you have interlobular artery here before you get your afferent arterial, then the efferent arterial. And the veins will correspond to so interloba artery with interloba vein. Okay, so this is just a picture to show you. Um, with contrast imaging, how the blood vessels are branching from renal to interloba to interlobular to arcuate. So then we go to the functional unit of the kidney, which is called the nephron. It's the basic structural and functional unit of the kidney, and it contains. We have two types of nephrons: the cortical nephrons and the juxtamedullary nephrons. So the parts of the nephrons include the glomerulus, where filtration occurs. Then you have substances or urinary substances with enter proximal convoluted tubule into the loop of Henle, then into the distal convoluted tubule. Those are uh, the nephrons. And then we have the uriniferous tubules that are formed by the collecting um, tubules and the ducts. So a nephron is made up of two parts, the glomerulus and the uriniferous tubule. So the uriniferous tubule is made up of the um, PCT, DCT and the collecting tubules. So the nephron, you have the glomerular part which is surrounded by the Bowman's capsule. So it's a blindly ending tubule with glomerular capillary. So the Bowman's capsule houses the glomerular capillary. Then from the glomerulus, we have the uh, proximal thick segment made up of proximal convoluted tubule and proximal straight segment. Then you get to the thin limb, this was thick segment, you get to the thin limb, then the distal thick segment with distal straight segment and distal convoluted tubule. So you can um, divide the parts of the nephron as follows. So again, this is your glomerulus within the Bowman's capsule, that's the renal corpuscle with proximal convoluted tubule, the thick descending limb and uh, thin limb. So all these forms will look of handle before you get to the distal convoluted tubule and the collective tubules. Again, we say the outer part is the cortex ending in renal columns. Then these are medullary pyramids that open into papillae, through papillae into minor calyces, many minor calyces join to form major calyces. And then the major calyces form the renal pelvis that empties into the ureter. So this is the medulla, cortex, minor calyces, major calyces. 
renal pelvis, medulla. This is the hilar mother vessels. And so the glomeruli are capillaries that are housed within the Bowman's capsule and they receive blood from an afferent arterial which is usually larger in diameter than the efferent arterial. So the renal corpuscle is the Bowman's capsule with the tuft of capillaries within it. So um, the renal corpuscle, what are the functions? It helps in filtration of plasma from the glomerular capillaries. So you're able to um, filter filtration of the glomerular capillary. And the glomerular capillaries are usually the fenestrate, have fenestrated endothelium with open fenestra, but this fenestra lack diaphragm. So the glomerula is made up of fenestrated capillaries with and the fenestra are open, although they lack the diaphragm. Bowman's capsule usually encloses the urinary space. Bowman's capsule encloses the urinary space, and this is the space that contains the provisional urine, the filtrate. As blood enters through the afferent, it's filtered, and then the urine is contained within the the provisional urine is contained within the Bowman space before it gets to the proximal convoluted tubule. Meanwhile, the remaining blood that has already been filtered exits the glomerulus through the efferent arterial. You need to um, appreciate that you have simple cuboidal epithelium in the proximal convoluted tubule, and this has microvilli or brush border. While well, the distal convoluted tubule is located uh, around the afferent and efferent arterial, and it also has simple cuboidal epithelium but lacks microvilli. And it has uh, modified columnar cells, which you call the macular denser cells, that are in close proximity with um, the cells of the afferent arterial. And these cells of the afferent arterial have, are modified to form what you call the juxtaglomerular cell. Then you need to appreciate that. This portion of the glomerulus with blood vessels with the vascular pore and towards the proximal convoluted tubule um, is the urinary pore because that's where the provisional urine is contained. Again, you can appreciate that's the basal lamina of the glomerula. So um, we have the Bowman's capsule is covered by an inner visceral layer and this is formed by the podocyte and an outer parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. These are the fenestrated capillary. Remember, we said the fenestra are open and they lack diaphragm, and you have food processes around the uh, podocytes around the um, basement membrane of the capillaries. So the Bowman's capsule has an outer parietal or capsular layer which has simple squamous epithelium and an inner visceral layer which has podocytes that have interdigitating pedicels or food processes, and these are separated by slit pores that are spanned by slit membranes. So outer um, parietal simple squamous epithelium and inner visceral made up of uh, podocytes with interdigitating pedicels. Then the Bowman's capsule also has a vascular pore where the afferent and efferent arterioles are and a urinary pore where the provisional urine is formed before it enters the proximal convoluted tube. So this is the structure of a renal corpuscle that's made up of your Bowman's capsule, you have simple squamous outer parietal layer, and you have your visceral layer, and these are the um, capillaries within the, the glomerulus. So, uh, as you can appreciate, um, the renal corpuscle here, and these are the columnar cells of the, uh, most likely the distal convoluted tube with the macular denser cells. What are the components of the filtration barrier? You have the cap uh, uh, glomerular capillary fenestration endothelium. So the capillaries within the, the fenestrated capillaries in the glomerula lie, the endothelium of fenestrated capillaries of the glomerula lie on the basement membrane. And the basement membrane contains type 4 collagen with heparin sulfate, laminin, and fibronectin. So this basement membrane is made up of fused basal lamina of these capillary endothelial cells and basal lamina of the podocyte. Then you have slit membrane between pedicels of the podocyte. So that's what forms the filtration barrier. So the endothelium of fenestrated capillaries and their basal lamina lying on their basal lamina, and you also have the podocytes lying on their basal lamina. The basal lamina are fused together to form the basement membrane that contains collagen, four heparin sulfate, laminin, and fibronectin. Another component of filtration barrier are the pedicels of the podocyte. So this is how it looks like in electron microscope you can appreciate